is to have a commitment to diversity. I am part of an administration that has the finest record on diversity and, and incidentally, an excellent, uh, I mean, I think our success over the last eight years has not been in spite of diversity, but because of it, because we're able to draw on the wisdom and experience from, from different parts of the society that hadn't been tapped in the same way before. And incidentally, Mel Carnahan in Missouri had the finest record on diversity of any governor in the entire history of the state of Missouri. And I want to honor that among his other achievements here. Now, I, I just believe that what we have to do is enforce the civil rights laws. I'm against quotas. This is, uh, with all due respect to governor, that's a red herring. Affirmative action isn't quotas. I'm against quotas. They're illegal. They're against the American way. Affirmative action means that you take extra steps to acknowledge the history of discrimination and injustice and prejudice and bring all people into the American dream because it helps everybody, not just those who are directly benefited. Governor, what is your, are you opposed to affirmative action? No, if affirmative action means quotas, I'm against it. If affirmative action means what I just described, what I'm for, then I'm for it. You heard what I was for. Vice President keeps saying I'm against things. You heard what I was for. And that's what I support. What about, Mr. Vice President, you heard what he said. He said if affirmative action means quotas, he's against it. Affirmative action doesn't mean Good. quotas. Are you for it without quotas? Well, I may not be for your version, Mr. Vice President, but I am for what I just described to the lady. She Are you for answer. what the Supreme Court says is a, a constitutional way of having affirmative action? Jim, just let's go on to another, another uh, <laughs> And it's, that it's a question. Itself. No, it and doesn't speak question. for itself, Mr. Vice President. It speaks for the fact that there are certain rules in this that we all agree to, but evidently rules don't mean anything. <laughs> the question is for you, uh, Vice President Gore, and Lisa Key will ask it. Lisa Key, where are you? There we go. Sorry. How will your tax proposals affect me as a middle class, 34 year old single person with no dependents? If you make less than $60,000 a year and you decide to invest $1,000 in a savings account, you'll get a tax credit, which means in essence that the federal government will match your $1,000 with another $1,000. If you make less than $30,000 a year and you put $500 in a savings account, the federal government will match it with $1,500. If you make more than $60,000 up to $100, you'll still get a match, but not as generous. You will get a uh, access to lifelong learning and education, help with uh, tuition if you want to get a new skill uh, or, or training. If you, if you want to purchase health insurance, you will get help with that. If you want to participate in some of the dynamic changes that are going on in, uh, in our country, you will get specific help in doing that. If you are part of the, uh, of the bottom 20% uh, or so of wage earners, then you will get an expanded earned income tax credit. Now, the tax relief that I propose is directed specifically at middle income individuals and families. Uh, and if you, have a, uh, if you have an elderly uh, parent or grandparent who needs long-term care, then you will get help with that $3,000 tax credit to help your expenses in taking care of a loved one who needs long-term care. Governor Bush? Right. Let me just say, the first, the, this, this business about the, kind of the entitlement he tried to describe about savings, you know, matching savings here and matching savings there, if fully funded, is going to cost a whole lot of money, a lot more than we have. Uh, you're going to get tax relief under my plan. You're not going to be targeted in or targeted out. Everybody who pays taxes is going to get tax relief. If you take care of an elderly in your home, you're going to get the personal exemption increased. I think also what you need to think about is not the immediate, but what about Medicare? You get a plan that will include prescription drugs, a plan that will give you options. Now, I hope people understand that Medicare today is, 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 is important, but it doesn't keep up with the new medicines. If you're a Medicare person, on, on Medicare, you don't get the new, new procedures. It's stuck in a time warp in many ways. So it'll be a modern Medicare system that trusts you to make a variety of options for you. 
You're going to live in a peaceful world. It'll be a world uh, of peace because we're going to have a clear, clear sighted foreign policy based upon a strong military and a mission that stands by our friends. A mission that doesn't try to be all things to all people. A judicious use of the military which will help keep the peace. You'll be in a world hopefully that's more educated so it's less likely you'll be harmed in your neighborhood. See, an educated child is one much more likely to be hopeful and optimistic. Uh, you'll be in a world in which uh, fits into my philosophy. You know, the harder work, the harder you work, the more you can keep. It's the American way. Government shouldn't be a heavy hand. That's what the federal government does to you. It should be a helping hand. And tax relief and the proposals I just described should be a good helping hand. Governor, next question is for you, and Leo Anderson will ask it. Mr. Anderson. Hey, Leo. What? You want a mic? Uh, in one of the last debates held, uh, the subject of capital punishment came up. And in your response to the question, you seem overly enjoyed, as a matter of fact, proud that Texas leads the, led the nation in execution of prisoners. Uh, sir, did I misread your response? And are you really, really proud of the fact that Texas is number one in executions? No, I'm not proud of that. Death penalty is very serious business, Leo. Uh, it's, uh, it's an issue that good people obviously disagree on. I take my job seriously. And I, if, if you think I was proud of it, I, I think you misread me. I do. I, uh, I was sworn to uphold the laws of my state. During the course of the campaign in 1994, I was asked, do you support the death penalty? I said I did, if, I, if administered fairly and justly, because I believe it saves lives. Well, I do. I think if it's administered swiftly, justly, and fairly, it saves lives. One of the things that happens when you're a governor, at least oftentimes you have to make tough decisions, and you can't let public persuasion sway you because the job is to enforce the law. And that's what I did, sir. There have been some tough cases come across my desk. It's some of the hardest moments since I've been the governor of the state of Texas is to deal with those cases. But my job is to ask two questions, sir. Is the person guilty of the crime? And did the person have full access to the courts of law? And I can tell you, looking at you right now, in all cases, those answers were affirmative. Now, I'm not proud of any record. I'm proud of the fact that violent crime is down in the state of Texas. I'm proud of the fact that, uh, that, uh, uh, that we hold people accountable. But I'm not proud of any record, sir. I'm not. Vice President Gore? I support the death penalty. I think that it has to be administered not only fairly with uh, attention to things like DNA evidence, which I think uh, should be used in all capital cases, uh, but also with uh, very careful attention. If, uh, if for example, somebody uh, uh, confesses to the crime and somebody's waiting on death row, uh, there has to be alertness to, to say, wait a minute, have we got the wrong guy? If the wrong guy is put to death, then that's a double tragedy, uh, not only as an innocent person uh, been executed, but the real perpetrator of the crime uh, has not been held accountable for it, and in some cases may be still at large. Uh, but I support the death penalty in the most heinous cases. Do both of you believe that the death penalty actually deters crime, Governor? I do. That's the only reason to be for it. I don't. Let me finish. Sir. Sure. I, I, I don't think you should support the death penalty to seek revenge. I don't think that's right. I think the reason to support the death penalty is because it saves other people's lives. Vice President Gore? I think it is a deterrence. I know that's a controversial view, but I do believe it's a deterrence. All right. Next question is for you, uh, Vice President Gore, and Thomas Fisher will ask it. Mr. Fisher? Uh, yes. My uh, sixth grade class at St. Clair School wanted to ask of all these promises you guys are making and all the pledges, will you keep them when you're in office? Yes. <laughs> I am a person who keeps promises. And you know, we've heard a lot uh, about from the governor about not much being done in the last eight years, as if uh, 